Hello everybody and welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today, as you can see, we are talking about ink bottles. What makes an ink bottle good? What makes an ink bottle bad? Well, it's all opinion. Definitely all opinion. But for today, you're going to learn mine. So let's get into it. So inks are a beautiful thing. If you love fountain pens, chances are you love ink just as much, if not more especially if you are somebody like me who really got into fountain pens because of ink. But not all bottles are created equal. As you saw in the opener, there were three kind of separate groups that I had some of my bottles selected into, and we're going to start with this group. Why? Because it is the crappiest group. <laughs> um, some of these inks are amazing. Like I, One of my favorites, one of my favorites, one of my favorites. Um, the ink themselves are great. I have zero complaints with that. What sucks is the bottles, and that's because most of them are very short, kind of squat with tiny opening. Now, I'm going to use our favorite Gerba um, 1670 Anniversary Inks. This one in particular is the Ocean Blue, um, you know, with the lovely shimmer on the bottom. I do have all of the 1670 Anniversary Inks. Um, and I love them. The inks are great. The bottles are just beautiful. I absolutely love the look of them. However, these are quite useless. Um, reason being, predominantly, is because of the opening. It is so teeny weeny. Like, you're not going to be able to fit more... Um, whoop. You're not going to be able to fit a pen in there that's larger than the size of like a Pilot Metropolitan or a Lamy Safari. Um, anything with a grip size, like, larger than this, you will not be able to fill, um, simply because you will not be able to get your nib into the bottle itself. So you're either going to have to decant it or use an ink syringe in order to use this bottle. Um, and because it is such a square, you're only going to be able to use about half the bottle before you're going to have to decant it anyways because your filler hole isn't going to be able to get all the way down to the bottom. Um, so gorgeous, gorgeous bottle, but pretty dang useless. Um, and to be honest, that kind of goes with the rest of them too. Um, the Caveco has a larger opening, which is nice. Ah, that's on there way too tight. Um, has a larger opening, but as you can see, it's a very short bottle. Um, you know, it's kind of squat. There's only 30 milliliters in here. So when you dip your pen into the bottle, again, you're only going to be able to use about half of it. Um, so that really only means you're going to be able to use about 15 milliliters before you're going to have to start um, decanting it or again using an ink syringe. The issue that this has is the exact same issue that the diamine bottles. They have actually redone these bottles. Um, the design wise, they're not all just these stripes. Now there's like some bumps and stuff like that. And apparently they made the glass a little bit thicker. Um, but as far as I'm aware, the actual opening is the exact same. So basically small. <laughs> um, so the reason why that's a big deal is because when you go to put your pen in the ink, you can't get the angles that you're you're required to get in order to use most of the actual ink itself before you have to start decanting. Um, so once again, this issue falls down to you're only gonna be able to use about half of the ink in the bottle before you have to find some other method. Now there is 80 milliliters in this bottle, so you know you'll at least get 40 rather than 15. Um, but you know this. Probably one of my favorite inks, Lidete Gerbin, but it is the worst bottle I've ever seen in my entire life. This would take the cake for the number one bottle that is useless, in my opinion. So, so, so tiny. The opening themselves, again, quite narrow. It's big enough where you can fit pretty much any pen into, which is nice, but the bottle is so short that it doesn't matter. I mean, like... You're only basically going to be able to use this bottle until the ink gets to the base. Um, and then that's it. So really, you're only going to get a couple fillings out of this bottle before you've got to find another alternative. So that's definitely the worst bottle. 
Pelican Edelstein, again, great ink. I mean, as you can see, it's empty. <laughs> um, this one, it beats most of these in, in the sense of like the opening. Um, but once again, when you go to fill it, you've got to be so careful. Like when you try and tilt it, you just, you can't. Like you can see here, I'll even flip this around. Oh man, I'm gonna wash this out now. The sepia is coming out. Check it out. I have detrimental sepia in this pen. Um, you're only gonna be able to get again about half the bottle before you have to start using it. So gorgeous bottle, very nice like stability. This ain't going anywhere. Like you're not gonna tip it over. In fact, none of these bottles, you know, are at risk in my opinion of being tipped over when you're using it when you're filling them. Um, they're good that way, but you're just, you're going to get nowhere with it. Um, and the Monteverde, this one I put in the worst category. It's probably not the worst, like, like something like this is the absolute worst. You know, the opening is fairly round, but the base flattens out so much, um, that again, you're only going to be able to use probably till about here before you're going to have to start finding alternative method um, because you can't tilt it or anything like that to actually get your ink out. So this is my worst category. Now if we take a, a ride over here, this is what I call my in-between category. Um, so these aren't the worst, but they're certainly not the best bottles. Um, Private Reserve is amazing because it is literally a jar. You know, you've got this huge wide open hole that you can pretty much, you know, do all kinds of angles to, to actually get your ink out of. But it's definitely not the best looking bottle. Um, so, I mean, ink bottles typically, you have two things that, you know, you focus on your design and practicality. Um, so something like this is, is all design. It is gorgeous, but there's no practicality to this. This bottle is the opposite. Um, definitely a good practicality to it, um, but basically no design. Um, and that is basically what every single one of these bottles suffer from. Noodlers, um, Diatramentis, Roaring Klingner, all basically have the same thing as private reserve. Um, they work well enough to get your ink out of, and that's about it. They're not really anything to look at. It's not something that you'd be like, oh yeah, like check this bottle out, like it's so gorgeous. But it does its job, you know, so what more can you really ask for? I threw Sailor into the in-between. Some people are going to disagree and want this in the top, and some people are going to disagree and actually want it um, in the worst. Now, I don't actually have this ink in here. I actually have Diamine Ancient Copper. Um, but the reason why I put this in the middle um, is because it's a decent looking bottle. And if you use smaller pens, like if you use something like a Pilot Metropolitan um, or something like that, this may actually become your favorite because of this little cone that's in there. Um, and because this is full of ink, I'm gonna actually use an empty uh, Twisby inkwell to show you because they have the cone as well. So what this does is essentially you fill your container, or in this case, the bottle with ink, and then you can put this cone in there. And if you can see, it's got holes, so that way when you pop it in, you can flip the bottle upside down when it's capped, obviously. And the ink, when you flip it back, will get trapped into this cone here. Um, so that when you go to fill your pen, um, you know, you've got plenty of ink to choose from, you know, to, to draw up, even though the bottle itself may be getting fairly empty um, so that you can use most of it. So that is definitely handy, but if you use like a pen like a Mont Blanc or anything like that, then this bottle is gonna be basically doing nothing for you because you're not gonna be able to use the cone. It's not wide enough to allow the nib to sit in there. Um, 
And if you do have a pen like the Twisby VAC 700 or anything that takes a significant amount of ink, the cone is also going to be useless because it's not going to allow you to suck up enough ink um, in order to use it. So that's why I have the Sailor in the middle because depending on the pens you use, it'll be great or useless. So that's where that one ended up. <laughs> And now we go over to what I consider, and now this is, again, just out of the inks that I own. Um, there are other bottles that I don't own, but out of the ones I do, these are what I consider to be the best bottles. Um, reason being is because they combine both things that you look at when you get an ink bottle, design and practicality. Um, so this Mont Blanc one, for example, um, you get 60 milliliters of ink in this kind of shoehorn design. This borrows from the idea of the cone from the Sailor in the sense that when your ink starts to get low, you can actually tip it. So like you can see here that you can move the ink back and forth. So let's say when your ink is like way, way, way down here, you can tip it forward so that all the ink leaves this section and goes into this section here. So that when you dip your pen in, you're able to use the bottle longer than you would had it been um, designed like the Pelican Edelstein in the sense that it was, you know, straight across. Um, so you can use this bottle a lot longer before you have to use any other method to fill. Um, you still won't be able to use 100% of it. Absolutely no bottle will let you get 100% of the ink out of it. Um, but this lets you go pretty far before you have to do anything else. Um, just put that to the side. The Caran d'Ache um, series, as you can see, is actually tilted. So again, gorgeous design, heavy glass, um, and it's purposely tilted so that once again, you can get as much ink as you can before you have to um, start getting it out of this bottle. And the openings themselves on all of these bottles actually are fairly wide um, so that you can kind of finagle your pen around um, to get it to its optimum filling potential. Um, this point, I mean, I've got probably four milliliters or so left in here. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've gone as far as I can with this bottle now, but still that's pretty good to be able to get down to like four milliliters out of 50. Um, that's, that's pretty decent. So that's why it's in the best. Plus it just looks so darn pretty. Heck expensive though. Wow, is it expensive. <laughs> um, Waterman, which is really cool because it's actually one of the cheaper inks. Um, I really like too. The design is kind of cool, um, but it serves a purpose. So when you get low, you can actually have the bottle tilt so that when you're filling the pen, you're able once again to get as much ink as you can before you have to um, get rid of it. So even though it's kind of flat and bulky, something like, you know, Gerbon Lit Te, which again, worst bottle ever, um, you know, it's kind of flat, doesn't really do anything, but with the design, they've built in a lot of help for you. If you get super duper low, you can do something like this, although, I don't know if I would really feel comfortable with that. I haven't ever practiced it when this bottle is empty, but you can basically do any angle that you want to try and use this as much as possible. So that's convenient. And these two bottles here have very similar um, attributes to them. Both are 50 milliliters. Obviously you can tell, hello camera, both are significantly different in design. Um, the Pilot Eroshi Zuku line um, is, I think, just a gorgeous bottle. Um, and it has this little dip here, which once again is convenient because that's where you actually are going to put your nib into so that, again, you can try and use as much as possible. When you are using much larger pens like the Mont Blanc 149 or even the Jinhao 159, um, you're going to run into some, some more problems than you would have you been using like a Lamy um, Safari or um, Pilot Metropolitan or anything like that just because of where the filler hole is. Um, but this, they've really tried to let you use as much as possible. 
um, and the design is gorgeous. Um, again, a little on the pricey side, but you know, it's there. And the Lamy, if you take off the little paper that they give you, essentially it does the same thing. So while it is also squat, just like once again, the worst bottle in the world, um, they've had this little like nub thing that they've added. So you can put your nib all the way down here so that you can use pretty much until you get down to like the end of here before you have to start doing something else. Um, side note, Lamy Turquoise, one of my favorite inks ever. Gorgeous red sheen. But I don't really like any of the other Lamy inks, Lamy inks. Um, so that little nub there is really nice and convenient. Um, plus with this base, I mean, your bottle's going nowhere. It's not gonna tip, it's not gonna do anything. So really when it comes down to it, with all these inks, oh yeah, look at that slide. <laughs> um, with all of these inks, the inks themselves, no issue. But there's so many different bottle types. Um, so when you're looking to buy, you know, don't necessarily buy just off of the bottle themselves. Don't necessarily just buy the ink itself if you don't want to. But just know that when you buy something like this, you're going to have to come up with alternative solutions quicker than if you bought something like Private Reserve or, you know, Karen Dosh, uh, Pilot Hiroshi Zuku. Um, you know, those bottles are going to be very different. Um, pricing, obviously, will affect that as well. Um, I mean, Waterman, where'd my Waterman bottle there go? Uh, Oh, it's way behind. Um, the Waterman bottle is one of the better bottles, just like the Hiroshizuku bottle, but the price difference is, in, is incredible. I mean, Waterman, you're looking at about $14. No, sorry. Um, Waterman, you're looking at about $11.50. These are Canadian prices, but um, Pilot Hiroshizuku Canadian prices is like $40. <laughs> Um, you know, if you wanted to go up to Karen Dosh, which is one of the better bottles, that's $45 Canadian prices right now. Because again, our do dollar is in the toilet, but still. Um, you know, the G Urbain, which is the least amount of ink, you know, 30 milliliters per bottle, and has the worst, absolute worst bottle, in my opinion, is $13.50. So this costs more than Waterman. So really... There's a lot to think of when looking at like a, um, ink bottles, but that said, you're really buying the ink. You're not buying the bottle. So at the end of the day, that's what I would focus on is the ink that you're getting, but just keep in mind that you may have to start investing in separate ink wells, um, or a lot of, um, retailers will also sell empty ink bottles that you can buy. Um, so that you can get the most out of your ink. Thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully this gave you a little bit of info. You know, hopefully I didn't just drown on for too long. Um, it's getting quite a long video now, about 20 minutes. So I'm going to uh, leave you guys here. If you like it, hit subscribe, hit that like button, throw all the comments you got. Maybe tell me your favorite ink bottle that you own, your least favorite ink bottle that you own. And as always, I will see you next time. Cheers, guys.